Good morning, teachers. Today I am going to show you how to assign assignments in ThinkCentral. So first you're going to go to your portal, which is portal.egusd.com. Then you're going to click on the ThinkCentral link. The very first time you assign a class assignment, you need to make sure that you do this. Well, you always will go to Manage Classes. But the very first time, if you haven't already done this this school year, you will need to go to Classes, this little tab right here, Hover, then come down here where it says Classes. And maybe before you do it the first time, you should probably do this just to make sure. And then you're going to click on your section number. It's in blue. Click on the blue part. And then you need to make sure that this is checked. Go Math Personal Trainer and whatever grade you are, need, this box needs to be checked. So you'll check it here, and then you'll check it here. You can also come down and check some other things like that you might want. For example, on my grade level, I've put everything checked. So double check before you even start to make sure that this right here is checked. Once you're done, then I'm going to go back to what the actual thing central looks like. So when you're starting a regular assignment, once you know that's done, you'll click Manage Classes. Then you'll go over to Assignments. Click Create. Then you're going to select your grade level. Uh, this is always marked once you've got it, is the uh, personal math trainer. You're going to click your grade level. So I teach grade four. Select your resource, which for me, it's only personal math trainer. I think K12, you have more options. Then you're going to click Next. Sorry, my Wi Fi is being a little slow. Then you're going to click your unit. So I left off, unfortunately, I was only on fractions and decimals. So I'm just going to say fractions and decimals. From there, I have four chapters. Um, I left off on chapter eight. Then this is your lesson. So I'm going to pick the lesson I left off on. Um, I believe I was here. So multiply by whole fraction. So I'm going to click that 8.3. But again, they're all here. You can even do the review test, the mid-chapter checkpoint, and they even have a performance task if you wanted to. So 8.3, here's all my questions. So I'm going to click on one of them, and then I'm going to press Control A. By doing the Control A, it selects all of them. I move this arrow over and it puts all of those assignments. Now, if you wanted to combine lessons, let's say I wanted to do 8.3 and 8.4, I could do that. I could select one, control A, and I can move them over, okay? And they'll all be there. Before I send these out, I always hit preview. It says there are too many questions for this workflow. Only the first 30 will be displayed. So I kind of put too many questions in, but I can go back once I do, once I get some of them out. So actually, let me just get rid of some of them since I did that. I don't want to mess you guys up. Oh, there it goes. It's previewing. So as you're previewing, you might find that some questions might be a little tricky or some questions really aren't the essential standards. So you can look through. So write the word in written form. So maybe I like this one, so I want to keep it, but maybe I don't like this one. Well, you can just click remove question and it'll remove it. And you can go through and remove as many questions as you want until you've got the test that you, or the assignment that you, you want them to have. Once you've gone through and you've removed all the questions that you want to remove, you click um, just that. Because the questions that I took off, you'll notice, will be black actually because I did so many of them. Let me do this. I'm going to control A. I'm going to move them all over here now. I'm only going to click a couple questions. I'm going to move them over here because I want you to see how it would kick them out. So see how I have four problems? If I preview, and let's say I want to remove this question, then when I click here, I should now only have three problems, and the problems I'm not using are black over here. Um, or I'm sorry, the problems, yeah, the problems I'm not using are black over here, and the problems that I am using are kind of grayed out, so you can kind of see which problems um, you have. I always name it, so I'll give it a name. If if it was 1.8 or if it was um, 8.3, then I would give it the name 8.3. Um, this right here, 
because we're at home, I am going to make it a homework activity instead of a test and a quiz right now. Because if you make it a homework activity, then it gives them um, a lot of little helps in the corner. So if there's a video that goes with it, it'll let them have it. It'll let them see a step-by-step -step of the problem. It'll let them see um, some hints and some helps. If you assign it as a test and a, oh, and it'll let them check their answers three times. But if you don't, if you leave, leave it as test and quizzes, it gives them no helps at all. Um, and just with us being quarantined, I kind of want to give them those homework helps so they can try those helps before um, they come to my office hours. So now that I've got them, I'm going to click save. Oh, I left it as test and quizzes, but I'm not assigning this to my kids, actually assigning it. So then I click assign, and then I name it. So 8 point, whoops, 8.3. Um, I select my class, which I guess if you're, if you're junior high or you have more than one class, there'd be more than one section, but we're elementary or those teachers who I'm sending this to are elementary. Then I clicked add all. And then you pick the date that you want it to show up. And then you pick the date that you want um, it to not be able to show up on their to-do list. I always change this to 70% because to me, I feel like that's like the bottom of a C. Um, they define mastery as 75%, but that's just me personally. I, I think 70% um, is okay. And then I click save. I'm going to save it because I'm just going to delete it afterwards. So, okay. And then when I go to my assignments, I can click list. And then here are my assignments that I've done. So some of these have closed. So if I wanted to, I could click this and it would reopen them. So if I clicked this, I could change the date and reopen it. This is just old assignments. If you cancel this action, yes, I want to cancel the action. Um, if you want to see how they did and... With privacy laws, I don't really want to show you this because, but anyways, if you click results, it will give you the list of your kids and the percentage they got, and it'll show you by mastery and then by non-mastery too, and it usually goes in alphabetical order for that. Um, that's, and then I'd usually just take that and I put that into my, um, my grade book. I have another video that I'm going to send to the staff about um, what it looks like on the kid side of things. So I will send that to you as well, but I'm hoping that this helps. If you need me, you know how to reach me on my cell phone. All right. Bye, staff. Miss you.